In this video, I'm literally going to be showing you guys step by step how to create a cold email system, the exact system that got me to $6,000 per month in one of the most competitive niches in SMMA. And as you can see by the index on the left hand side here, we have quite a bit to cover. Um, so sit back, relax, you know, get ready to take some notes. This Google Doc is going to be in the description and let's get right into it. So first, the story behind the system. So when I first started my agency, I tried sending cold emails the way the agency navigator, which is Iman Gaji's course and other courses taught me only to see little to no results. The biggest problem with agency navigators cold email methods is that they are extremely outdated. Most of Eman's clients came from referrals and paid traffic. The last time he sent a cold email was probably 2019 to 2020 when the SMMA market was completely different. Back then, you could literally just send an email to any business owner telling them you could run Facebook ads and you'd book a few meetings. But now that the market is more saturated, you need updated frameworks to see results. There's still hundreds of new agency owners sending cold emails the old way, wondering why they can't sign clients, and that's exactly why I'm making this video. Determined to make cold email work, I searched the internet for answers from low-key agency owners who are still in the trenches. After spending weeks on YouTube and being favored by the algorithm, I finally found an up-to-date framework. I created a new script based on this framework and sent out 100 cold emails. The next morning, I woke up to two booked appointments on my calendar. The first one was a brokerage owner in Texas, and the second was a Zillow Premier agent in Florida. So you can't tell I'm in the real estate niche. The brokerage owner ended up being a no-show, but the Florida Premier agent ended up showing up, and I closed him. He's actually still with me today, and he's coming up on his sixth month. This is when I truly realized how powerful cold email was. The only problem is that I was still sending them manually and I knew I had to automate the process in order to scale. And this is when I created the first version of the battle tested system I'm going to be giving away for free in this video. Over the past few months, I've contacted 13,000 prospects through cold email, generated 300 plus leads and closed six clients, all were remaining wildly profitable. While doing this large amount of volume, I was able to optimize this system into a lethal sales call machine. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to build an automated and scalable system that can send 300 to 1200 plus cold emails every day that actually book meetings with 80% plus open rates for just 120 to $300 per month in software costs. So, start it off. Why cold email is one of the best outreach channels plus some proof of some of the campaigns that I've successfully run. So first off, it's scalable, right? If you want to send more cold emails, all you have to do is purchase more domains and scrape more leads. And everyone knows the saying volume negates luck. Predictable. Based on your conversion rate, you'll know exactly how many emails it takes to close one client. This allows you to predict the growth of your business and plan how many domains you need to purchase. Real-time feedback. You get real-time data almost immediately, allowing you to split test multiple angles in just a few days. So you can A-B split test offers, you can A-B split test angles very quickly by sending lots of cold emails. Automated. The entire process can be automated, giving you the blessing of never having to worry about an empty calendar again. Low cost per acquisition. You can literally acquire two to three clients per month for just a few hundred dollars in software expenses. Right, guys, where if you go to Facebook ads, it costs you anywhere, you know, up to a couple hundred dollars just to book an appointment. So here's some of the campaigns that I've run. You guys can see the open rate right here, 89%, 7.9% reply. 38 sales opportunities generated, 81% uh, open rate, 8.3 response, 97 sales opportunities. Uh, it says 0% open because after I you know, tested subject lines, I basically turn off open rate tracking and you'll learn more about that later in this training. So don't worry, but 8.4% response rate, 118 sales opportunities, 10.1% response rate and 80 sales opportunities. So you guys can see that, you know, the reply rate, it keeps going up because, you know, you can test things very quickly with cold email. And just to show you uh, really quick, yes, these campaigns are real. Uh, this is my instantly right now. You guys can see right here. This is one of the campaigns that I showed. Uh, this one's actually active right now. You guys can see this is the 10.1% reply. So let's hop back into the training. 
So part one is the technical setup. So this is the most boring part of this training, but it's also the most important. So if you skip this part, it's going to give you a headache and cause lots of problems later down the road. So you guys can see what we're going to cover in this section, buying domains and creating email accounts, setting up SPF, DKIM and DMARC, setting up your own custom tracking domain, setting up forwarding to your main domain, connecting domains to instantly and starting warm up. So if you've already done all of these, you can skip to part two of the video using the timestamps, which is scraping leads. But if you haven't, it's very important that you pay attention to this section, as if you don't do this, it's going to screw you over later down the road. So step one, buying domains and creating email accounts. Always, always buy your domains from Google as they're the most reputable in the space. Yes, you can buy much cheaper domains from other providers, but they come with deliverability issues straight off the box. So guys, don't buy your domains anywhere else except Google. Doesn't matter if you can get them cheaper because they're going to come pre blacklisted. It's going to be harder to set things up. Your deliverability is going to be bad straight out the box. So guys, the, the domains over at Google, they're only $12 and it will save you so much time and so much headache. Trust me, just stick to Google. The amount of domains you will buy will depend on how many cold emails per day you are trying to send. I recommend buying at least four domains as this will allow you to send 300 cold emails per day with 80 to 90 percent open rates. So guys, Serge Guattari, he says if you're not doing at least 300 outreach per day, you should just quit. So, you know, I recommend buying at least four domains. Um, and if you want to do the math, here's some general guidelines. So per domain, we create two to three email accounts. And per email account, we send 25 to 50 cold emails per day. More on this in the deliverability section. So you might be thinking, what do I name these domains, right? Because I've already had my main domain. So what do I name these ones? So buy domains similar to your main domain. So for example, my main domain is ardentadvertising.io. And here's some example of some of the domains I bought. We have app ardentadvertising.com, ardentadvertisement.com myardenadvertising.com, runardenadvertising.com, try, go, get. So you can see we kind of just put like get, go, try, run. We put all these things in front of the domain. And then a little trick too is always do .com at the end. Uh, it's been split tested by people who are really deep into this and they say that the response rates are actually a little bit higher when you use .com. So it's, you know, it's more reputable. So make sure to do .com if you can. Uh, and then when it comes to creating the email accounts with the domain, always use Google or Zoho. Um, I know a couple of people use Zoho. I would just use Google because it's super simple to set up since you buy the domain on Google. Um, and it makes setting up this stuff, SPF and DKIM, DKIM, you can do it a lot easier if you use Google for your email accounts. Okay. So how to manage multiple dom domains without losing your mind. So you might be thinking, do I have to, you know, log in, log out of all these accounts, which will very quickly cause you to lose your mind. So I use a tool that's called biscuit browser and how it works is like, it's an application that you can open up and you basically add apps on the left hand side. You see down here. So what we would do is you would create an app for Gmail for every email account. So then every time you switch, you just have to click these buttons on the side. So you can see here's actually a screenshot of mine. You guys can see I have all the email accounts on the side. So these are all the domains. And then this is the ones that are Jackson at. So this is the first set of accounts. These are all the domains, second set of accounts. So I can easily just, you know, click on the left hand side and very quickly switch through email accounts. So when I'm setting all of this up with instantly, you know, it's a lot quicker, a lot easier. So download biscuit browser and you can very easily, you know, create a bunch of apps for Gmail. Uh, so part two, this is the most important part guys. And you know, you do not want to skip this or it will screw you up in terms of deliverability and you will waste this. You'll do this whole process for nothing. Okay. So it's very important that you set this stuff up right off the bat. So if you've been in SMMA space for a while, you've probably heard these terms a million times, but barely anyone knows what they mean or what they actually do. They are all entries in your domain's DNS settings, which can be accessed in your domain provider settings. So guys, again, this document is in the description. Um, so, you know, you can open this up and I kind of guide you guys through how to do it. So it's not important for you to know what SPF, DKIM and DMARC do, but it's crucial to your deliverability that you set them up properly. So first off, we set up SPF and DKIM. So 
the main account, which is your admin account, which is where you, so if I click on this right here, you see where it says admin console, you wanna go there. And once you've gone there, you wanna to go to manage domains and it will show you all your domains in a list like this. And you'll see under status, there's something in this red circle, it says activate, activate Gmail. So what you'll do is you'll click activate Gmail and that will bring up this. And you wanna make, and by default, it will be selected on set up MX record, make sure it's selected, press next, and that's it. So that's it for setting up SPF and DKIM. That's why I said it's super easy to do if you have a Google, literally just press a couple of buttons. And then for DMARC, this is the most important DNS entry. And don't worry if this is confusing. Um, you can download this doc and follow along, or you could just Google this stuff on YouTube, but I'll very quickly just walk you through everything you need to have set up. So what you do is you go to your domain settings, right, in Google, and then you go to DNS records, and you basically hit, you know, you click manage custom records, and then you enter this. So you can see for the host, you do underscore DMARC, and this is a screenshot right here. For type, you do TXT and TTL, don't have to worry about that, it'll be 3600 by default. And then for data, you just paste what I have right here in the document, except where it says name at domain, you're gonna put yours. And actually, scratch that, don't put the name, actually it doesn't matter if you do, but you guys can see in mine, I just put the domain. So you know, just put that domain in there, and then basically you would just press, uh, add this record and then you'd be good to go in terms of DMARC. So that's how you guys set up uh, SPF, DKIM and DMARC. Again, if you run into any trouble doing this, you can very easily YouTube it. Just know that these are the exact steps that you need to follow before you can move on. So next is setting up a custom tracking domain. So now you need to set up your own custom tracking domain, which is your personal pixel used to track opens and clicks in your emails. This is a crucial step to maintaining good deliverability hygiene. In the future, we're going to turn off open tracking altogether, but it's needed for testing in the beginning. If you do not set up your own custom tracking domain, a public tracking domain will be used, which is shared by everyone else sending cold emails. This means if they don't practice good deliverability hygiene, your domains will be affected as well. So it's kind of like sharing a toothbrush with someone, right? Not good. Uh, just like SPF, DKAM, and DMARC, your custom tracking domain can be set up with a simple DNS entry in your domain provider settings. So again, guys, you go to Google domains, you go to DNS settings, and you add another record. So for this record, you guys can, you know, pause the video or read the document. For host or for type, it's CNAME. For host, you put track, and then the value is this right here. So prox.itrackly.com, and then you click save, okay? And that's how we set up a custom tracking domain. Again, if that's confusing, you know, pause the video, open up the document, look up a video on YouTube, just make sure that this gets done, okay? Setting up your forwarding domain. So this part is very crucial and a lot of people skip over it. Lastly, you wanna make sure that all of your sending domains are forwarded to your main domain. This is the easiest part of the technical process. You're almost done. The main reason for setting up forwarding is that when you start sending cold emails, lots of your prospects will copy and paste your domain into their search. This is basically like free traffic to your website and is especially powerful if you have VSLs, case studies, and social proof. It's also not the best look if a prospect pastes your burner domain and it gives them an error message. Just like the previous steps, this is extremely simple and can be done in your domain provider settings. So guys, you go to the domain provider settings. Instead of clicking DNS, you're gonna click website, and then that's gonna bring up this, and in the top right-hand corner, click add forwarding address, and then put your main website in there, okay? Guys, seriously, this stuff, this forwarding stuff is super powerful because like 20 to 30% of everyone you send a cold email, I found will paste in the domain. And that's literally just free traffic that's being driven to your website. So if you have a case study or a video sales letter, that's a big conversion mechanism. So one of the clients that I closed, they didn't respond to the cold email. They pasted my domain and I have a case study on my website. They went through the case study funnel. They watched the video. They booked a call. They hopped on the call with me and in 10 minutes I sold them because they were already fully warmed up. They went through the whole funnel and he didn't even reply to my cold email. He just came to my website 
from the forward, right? So guys, you can drive so much traffic to your website. So if you have a good VSL, a good case study, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be booking meetings for cheaper than you would with paid traffic because you're directing basically free traffic to your website. So it's very important that you set up your, your forwarding domain, okay? So next step is connecting domains and email accounts to instantly.ai and starting warm up. Now, before we move on, we have to connect our domains to instantly. You can see the links right here. This is the best cold email software in my opinion. What makes instantly the better option compared to competitors like Lemlist is the fact that we can have unlimited email accounts for the same price. On top of that, the platform is created by some of the best cold email minds in the space and they are constantly improving the platform. So guys, on Lemlist, you have to pay the price per email account. So it very quickly adds up where instantly all you have to pay, depending on how many cold emails you wanna send, 40 bucks a month or a hundred bucks a month and you can have unlimited email accounts and guys honestly i prefer the platform so much more than uh lemlist lemlist does have a really good warm-up function and that's because uh companies like google and amazon are in it so you're basically sending emails with them but guys if you want to put like 10 email accounts set up on lemlist it's going to cost you grand per month where you know instantly is literally the same thing um, so definitely go with instantly. So connecting all our domains to instantly is super simple, but we have to turn on a few settings in Gmail first. So first we have to enable IMAP. Now this is a, a setting in Gmail. So on your computer, open up Gmail, click settings in the top right corner, click forwarding POP slash IMAP tab. So once you go to settings, it'll look like this, click this, and then in the IMAP access section, select enable IMAP and then click save changes. And that's how you do that, okay? And so next we have to create an app password. And in order to create an app password, you have to set up two factor authentication. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to your Google account settings and you can do that by in any Google application right here where it says manage your Google account. And once you go there, you wanna click the security tab. So it looks like this. And then you'll see signing into Google uh, to, and then once you click this to turn it on, it'll ask you to verify your phone number. Maybe you already have it set up. If you do, you can skip this part. Uh, so basically just enter your phone number, press next. And then once, you, once you've done that, if you go back to the security setting, there'll be a new option under two-step that says create app password. Then you're gonna wanna click that. And then once that comes up, you're gonna wanna select mail for app and custom for device. And then, and then as soon as you click that, it will generate you what's called an app password. And you just wanna copy that, uh, just leave it in your clipboard, okay? And then you wanna go to instantly. Um, and then what you can do is on their homepage, you just click add new, uh, Gmail. Yes, IMAP has been enabled, app password, next. And then all you do is enter the email address here and then paste your app password here and click connect. Okay, so that's how you connect the email account to instantly and you're going to want to repeat that step for all the email accounts that you've created. And that's where Biscuit Browser makes things very easy because you know you have to set up two factor authentication on all of them. Uh, something else to keep in mind guys is so when you're setting up these Google accounts, you might you might only be able to use your own number to verify the account, uh, you know, a couple of times, maybe like three or four. And then what you do is you use this website called SMS Spa. Uh, you basically go to activations and you use a Russian phone number. So you don't have to worry about this. Uh, you just make sure it's selected on Russian. You scroll down to service, you type in Gmail, um, ch -ch -ch -ch. yep, this one right here. And then you would click get number and you'll see one popped up right here. You basically copy this number, put it into the two-step verification. And then once the activation code comes in, it'll pop up right here. And then you just paste that in. And then the Google accounts verified. Um, so I'll include this in the Google doc by the time you guys get to it. But, um, and it's very important that you create a backup passcode okay so when you're in your email settings and you're in you want to go back to security and you want to hit create backup passcode because then if it asks you to verify that number again you'll see this number only lasts for for 12 minutes so but if you create a backup passcodes you can use them all you want and then what's cool about biscuit browser is let me scroll back up is you guys will see that there's these three little dots next to the each account. 
you click that and you click edit and it brings up a notes tab and that's where you paste the backup codes. So anytime that you have to re-enter that phone number, you just click alternative options and it'll say enter your backup code and you just paste it from there. And then once you use it, you would delete it out of the notes. And then basically once you're down to one or two backup codes, as long as you have one backup code, you can create eight more. Um, so that's basically how you get around that issue that you might run into when you're you know, creating a lot of email accounts. Uh, so I'll include this. It's not in the document right now, but by the time I post this video, I'll make sure it is. So SMS Spa, very good, very good tool. Um, so once you've done that, you know, you'll know you be set up on instantly and you basically just repeat that process for all the emails. And you know once you have all your emails on instantly, it's time to put them on warm up. So to do warm up on instantly, basically once you have all your accounts connected, it'll look something like this. You'll see for me, my warm up button, it, it says pause warm up and it's green because I already have it on, but yours will be red. You just, it will say start warm up and you just click that and then you're good to go and your emails will be on warm up and you know, you'll leave them on there for two weeks. Um, and, but let's move on to the next section of the training. So part two, scraping leads. So we're going to cover the main lead scraping tool that I use, Apollo.ai, alternative scraping tools, how to get sales navigator 80% off, and how to bulk verify emails. So the main scraping tool that I use is Apollo.io. Apollo.io is cheap and effective lead source. That's why I'm going over it first. The lead source will be all most of you need to start scraping high quality leads in your niche, but just in case we'll be going over more advanced sources later. The process still takes time, but luckily it can be delegated to a virtual assistant if necessary. Apollo costs $100 per month for 10,000 emails. So every single month you get 10,000 email credits. After verification, which we'll be covering later, you'll be left with 5,000 to 6,000 emails, which is enough to close at least two clients per month at minimum. Not bad for $100, right? Okay, so in this document, I provided a step-by-step -step guide on how to do Apollo, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna walk you guys through it myself. So right here is Apollo. Once you come in, you'll go to the search section and it's kind of similar to Sales Navigator. You know, you have a ton of filters you can use. The two main filters that I talk about being very important in the document is first is the job titles and then the location and then the exclude. So I'm gonna actually go over these with you guys right now live. So basically job titles. So this is where, for example, I'm in the real estate niche. So what I'll type in is real estate agent. And it's basically gonna pull up leads that have this job title. And you'll see, it'll give a second to load and you'll see, so it has about 200K real estate agents. But what I also might wanna do is realtor. Cause you know, something I found out coming in this niche is a realtor and a real estate agent are actually two different things. Uh, you're they're, you know, they're different titles. So look, this will probably boost up the list. And so that literally more than doubled the list. Okay. So you really want to do some research on your niche and all the job titles that you need to, you know, include. And then something else that's super cool is you can actually exclude job filters. Okay. So what you want to do is, is not, you want to check this button is not part of, and this is where, you know, your knowledge in your niche will come in handy. But for example, I only work with residential real estate agents. So I don't want any commercial real estate agents in this list. So you can exclude people who commonly get, you know, confused with your niche. So for example, real estate agents there, it might accidentally put some insurance agents in here, or it might accidentally put some commercial real estate agents in here. So I want to make sure that it excludes commercial real estate agent and you'll see that will make the list go down a little bit so you guys will see that dropped it you know i think like about a thousand leads but that still makes you know i don't want you know I, i'm we're paying for these leads you know we're, we're getting ten thousand credits per month so you really want to make sure it excludes uh you know anything that could be easily confused so you guys kind of get that section and keep in mind all of these filters you can exclude stuff from so it's not just, you know, job titles. It's not just, uh, it's, it's everything you can exclude. So like the next big filter that I use is location. So I only work with real estate agents inside of the United States. So I'll click that as location. 
Um, but then let's say that there's specific states that I don't want to work with a client in, right? So what I can do is exclude locations because you can use exclude filters on everything. So let's say that I don't want to work with agents in California. You know, the market's kind of rough. It's hard to get them good results. So we'll go ahead and exclude that. And then say like if I already have a client in a specific location and I don't need another client in that area, I can exclude them there as well. So you guys get the idea. You can exclude, include a lot of different things. Um, another big thing to do is right here where it says email status, always do this. You're going to see, so right now the list is at 440 K you want to come here and click verified. This isn't a final step of verification, but it'll help you clean your list a lot more. So when you do go use the verify software, the percentage will be a lot lower. The percentage that gets out like, you know, dirty, that's not verified. So you guys see that dropped like 400 K leads. So this is a very, very important filter to choose. Okay. Another big so like depending on what your niche is, you can also choose like, you know, employees. So like if you're if you're working with companies, you can choose the employee size you want. Uh, another big filter is revenue, right? So if you're working with companies that like you can do private company, public company, minimum revenue, max revenue. Um, another big one that I also really like is you click more filters right here. OK, um, we'll let this come up. And something that's very important is total years of experience or years in current role, right? So like real estate agents, 87% of them fail after the first five years. So if they've been an agent for five years, it means they're probably doing all right. So what I want to do is make it so it's real estate agents with minimum five years in their current role. Um, and what that does is it makes sure that, you know, they have five years of experience in their current job and not an old job. Um, so you can click more filters, you can get access to stuff like this, you guys will see this brings down the list even more. So your goal is to kind of make this list as low as possible, um, as hyper targeted as possible. So you can reach out to the highest quality leads. So those are basically how you use the filters inside of Apollo. So the next step is going to be exporting that list into a CSV so we can upload it in instantly and actually start reaching out to some of these leads. So I'll show you guys how in the document, but I'll actually show you guys live while I'm here. So what we want to do is we want to basically go to list and that's next to peoples and companies. And what you want to do is you want to create a new list. You want to name this whatever you want. So I'll just say YouTube video training, um, save, and then just save the list and then go back to people. And sorry, guys, my computer gets a little bit slow when I'm recording. I need to cop the new MacBook. Um, Okay, so now that we're back, what you want to do is so one you want to make sure you know all your once all your filters are checked and you've created a list. What you basically have to do is you click this, you click select this page, um, actually, and make sure that total is selected. Okay, this is very important actually. Yeah, so make sure total selected. And then make sure that you so you can only select 25 leads at a time uh, with the $100 a month plan. And so what you want to do is you want to click select this page, you want to click list, you want to click add to list, and then you want to click this and then video training confirm, and that will use 25 email credits and add those leads into the list. So what you would do is then you would click the next arrow. And you would basically just keep going through the list until you know, so it kind of can take a little bit of time. Um, so you can either one do this yourself, just play a podcast, something in the background, or you can pay a VA $3 per hour to do it for you, you just give them your login. So then once you have the list saved, well, actually, so you guys will notice something and no one talks about this, you can only go to 100. So what do you do once you get to 100? So what you would do is let's say hypothetically, I'm at 100. And a lot of people don't know how to do this. I'm giving away a lot of value on this video. So leave a like, uh, once you get to page 100, see, it won't let me go to 101. If I click it, nothing will happen, it might reload, but it'll be the same page. Okay. So how do you get around this is you go to the filters, you go to list. And you only do this once you get to 100, you go to list, you go to advanced settings. See, it gave me an error when I tried to go to page 101. So you go to advanced settings and you go to exclude. 
and then you exclude the list that you just saved everything to. And then what it does is it will restart back at page one because you know pages one to 100 you already have in the list. And then once you guys, once you start creating these lists every month, every time you're scraping, you wanna come in here and exclude. So like, look here, I'll show you guys something. So these are all my past lists. See, 9,000 leads, 9,000 leads. So every time I'm scraping a new list, I go to exclude and I make sure this is selected. So then I'm not scraping the same leads, right? Okay, so that's very important. So once you guys have done this, you know, you've scraped uh, 9,000 to 10,000 leads and you used all your email credits, you wanna go to back to the list section and you wanna click YouTube video training. Sorry guys, my computer's being a little bit slow. Um, and then you want to make sure that saved is selected right here. And if it is, you'll notice when we go back to the selector tool, and I'll give it a second to load here. Okay, and then we'll select it and you'll see select all people. So this will say this won't say 25 for you guys, it will say 9000 or 10,000 however many leads you scraped in your list. But for example, in me, I only just scraped 25 of them to show you guys an example. But this number will say the whole entire list. So then you want to do is select all people. And once you've selected that, it will you want to click export, and then you click export export all emails, you can click edit export CSV settings and you can choose if you want it to, you know, export their Twitter account, their LinkedIn URL, their Facebook page. By default, it'll export all that. But if all you want is their name, email and location and city and state, you would just, you know, you could go in there and edit that and you click start export. And it's basically going to save it to a CSV file. Um, and right there, and then you just click download. Okay. So that is how you use Apollo. That's how, you know, that's one way to scrape, you know, 10,000 emails every month for only $100, hyper-targeted, super simple. Um, but let's say that you need to scrape more emails than that, or you have a very specific niche and you wanna use better filters, maybe really, really target down these leads. I'm gonna give you guys some alternative tools that, you know, are good to have in the arsenal. So we have Evaboo and Lead Hype. So Apollo is enough to get the job done, but if you need very specific leads or want more than 5,000 to 6,000 emails per month without having to stack Apollo accounts, here's some other scraping tools I'd like to use. Basically Sales Navigator plus Evaboot or Lead Hype. So what Evaboot and Lead Hype are, they're tools where you can save your Sales Navigator searches into email CSV list. So before you skip this method because you think Sales Navigator is too expensive, let me show you a little secret. Nobody I know is paying full price for Sales Navigator. You can easily find someone with an enterprise plan and have them add you to their account for anywhere from $20 to $45 per month, which is a lot cheaper than paying full price, right? And you don't even have to search the internet for these enterprise sellers. All you need is a Fiverr account and some discernment. So what I mean by this is, Literally guys, so okay, so these enterprise plans are basically people who pay LinkedIn a lot of money and that gives them access to, you know, hypothetically add other people to Sales Navigator who are their employees or work under their company. But there's people who buy these enterprise plans and they resell them for cheaper. And you can literally access any of these on Fiverr. Just go to Fiverr, search up Sales Navigator Premium. And what I mean by you need discernment is you just have to choose someone who has multiple five star reviews and doesn't look super shady and it will work. So I already proved one that, you know, I know someone who ordered off this chick and she was legit. Uh, the person I used, I couldn't find them because I bought it multiple months ago. But guys, I'll literally show you. You just go to Fiverr, LinkedIn Sales Navigator Premium. So you guys can see this person has eight reviews. This is the person I showed you guys. They have five. Um, so you would just come here. Let's see what this person's selling it for. Um, and guys, really, isn't this crazy? Like not a lot of people are telling you that you can just buy, you know, LinkedIn Sales Navigator on Fiverr, which it's an insane tool to use. So you guys can see $30 a month. Um, and they'll basically add it to your account for you. Uh, or this one, okay, so it's 35 a month. Uh, and then premium is two months, it's 70. So this one actually, this one's definitely legit, um, but it is a little expensive. So like the one that I added here, it's you can pay six months upfront and it'll only be $20 per month. 
So it makes a lot of sense, you know, to pay it up front and then you just have it and you're good to go for six months, right? So after you pay them, they're going to have you fill out a Google form and LinkedIn Sales Navigator will then be added to your account in 24 to 48 hours. This gives you access to LinkedIn's entire database and 30 plus advanced filters. So how do you turn LinkedIn Sales Nav list into emails? So this is where Evaboo and LeadHype come in. Both of these softwares turn sales nav lists into emails for relatively cheap, uh, relatively cheaper. Although keep in mind that this won't be as cheap as Apollo, but the leads will be higher quality if you use the sales navigator filters right. So that's really the biggest plus side to using this is one, it's just another method for scraping leads, but sales navigator has way more searches than Apollo and they have a little bit of a cleaner database than Apollo. Um, so, you know, if you're willing to spend a little bit more or, you know, you need more leads and you don't want to pay for multiple Apollo accounts, you can do things this way. Uh, so Evaboot and lead hype, they're both pretty self-explanatory. They're linked in this document. Basically, all you do is you paste your sales navigator search into here, uh, a video on how to use sales navigator. That's a video for another day. Cause it's just such a big topic. Um, and this video is already going super in depth and I don't want to, you know, dedicate another 30 minutes to an hour just to sales navigator. So once you have your CSV file list, it's time to verify these emails. Okay. So after you've exported leads from any of these tools, even if they tell you it's verified, you should use a lead validation tool to keep your bounce rate below 2%. Your bounce rate is the percentage of emails that bounce due to being sent to an older invalid email address. Anything above a 2% bounce rate and your domain's reputation will start to go down. Lowering your deliverability over time, you'd be surprised to see how many leads don't actually exist. P.S. This is a very important step. Don't skip. So I use bulk mail checker as it's one of the cheapest options. The only downside to bulk mail is that it takes longer than other tools. So if you don't mind paying more for speed, you can use million verifier. Keep in mind, bulk email only takes about 10 hours to clean a list of 10,000 leads. You can also pay them to make it faster. Uh, so as long as you don't need to launch a campaign as soon as possible, it will save you lots of money over time. So to get started, log into your account and go to your log or to get started, log into your account and go to log into your account and go to bulk verifier page on the left hand side, select a bulk verify. So here I'll actually show you guys this live. Um, so once you've created an account with bulk verifier and the link is in the Google document, uh, it will basically bring you here. Well, actually, it will bring you to the dashboard page. And what you want to do is, you know, once you once you land on this, you want to go to bulk verify. And as well as I'll show you guys in the video, but I also have like the step by step instructions in here. Um, and a very important part is going to be filtering the Google sheet, but we'll get to that. Okay, sorry, I'm getting ahead. Um, so once you go to bulk verify, you'll see import file is right here. So what you want to do is you want to type out the name of the file. So you guys can see I have my own little names for staying organized. And as you guys can see, these are actual lists from Apollo. So you guys can see in this situation, 45% of the emails passed, uh, 64% and 48%. So if you would have just uploaded these lists and sent them out as cold emails, 50% of them would have bounced and that's going to basically blacklist your domain overnight, right? So you want to keep your bounce rate below 2% bulk mail checker actually guarantees a bounce rate below 3% or you get your money back. I always have a one to 2% bounce rate using them so I can personally vouch for them. They're great, great software. So what you want to do is you want to name, you know, so let's just say YouTube video list, but you want to name this just something to stay organized. Then of course you click choose file, uh, cold email video list. So, you know, this is basically the, the lead list that I exported. You click open. Uh, and then what you want to click is, and then depending on, so if this file contains email addresses only don't, you want to click this, but if it's like the list from Apollo, you want to click this file contains multiple columns of data. Okay. And you want to click upload and give it a second and it will start uploading. Okay, and then basically what you want to do is you want to wait about five to 10 minutes. And again, that is back here in the training. So what you want to do is you want to wait. And then you guys will see, we'll go back. And then what you want to do is you want to click, 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 geez, check status. 
you want to come back and click this after five to ten minutes and it'll t and it'll basically be imported and then once it is it will look something like this and you'll basically be given the option to pay for the amount of validations so what you guys want to do is you guys can see if you go to purchase this is basically where you buy your credits so i buy you know a lot as a, at a time to save money but you guys will see to verify 10,000 emails, it costs about 10 bucks, so not bad. And then if you buy them all together, you can save a little bit of money. So then once you have, uh, you know, once you buy some validation credits, and then also very important is it'll ask you which column is email. So these are basically all the variables in the spreadsheet. It will, it will pick up if it's email by default, but just in case, you know, you're uploading your own sheet and you name email like, if you name my prospects email, it won't pick it up and you want to come in here and make sure that that's selected. So this is like the column that gets verified. Once you press that, you click select. And again, guys, this is all in the Google document. So, you know, you can follow along in the video. Basically, this document is a guide on how to make a lot of money. It's how I got to 6K per month, just sending cold emails in a competitive niche as a complete beginner. So it's literally a very valuable guide, just giving it away all for free, teaching you guys what the courses didn't teach me. So then what you want to do is, you know, you want to come back here and, you know, five, 10 minutes, you want to click check status and let's see. And then once you do, it will look like this. And then you just want to click pay for the validations. If you want, you can boost it. I wouldn't recommend doing that because you, you just save a lot of money if you wait. And it, you know, like I mentioned, it takes about an hour per a thousand emails. So as long as you don't need to launch a campaign within 10 hours, you'll be good to go. So just make sure you do this a couple days before your campaign is going to run out and you know, you'll save a lot of money in the long run. So then once you do that, the list will look like this. And what you want to do is then you want to click export to a spreadsheet and you'll see it will download it right there. And then once you download it, it's not going to be ready yet. This is very important, guys. Please do not just download that and upload it. And I'll show you why in a second. So what you want to do is once that's downloaded, you want to come to a spreadsheet. You want to go to file and you want to click import. And, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to uh, upload and you would click browse and then you would click the file that we just downloaded okay um and i already did it so you know once you do it'll look like this and you'll notice where it says details it'll say you know this one didn't pass this one did pass this one didn't pass so what you want to do is you want to filter all the ones that passed and all the ones that didn't uh so basically what you want to do is create one more of these um so you want to create a second list in here uh, don't worry about that yet, but you want to do that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select the entire sheet. So like this, you click in the top left hand corner right here. And again, so I have a video on how to do this in here. So what you want to do is you want to select the whole sheet and then we want to click filter. So I'll show you guys how to do this. Um, okay. So once you've selected the whole sheet, make sure that this is covered. You want to come up here to the little funnel. So create a filter. You want to press that and then you'll notice this pops up. And what you want to do is you want to go to upload G sheet and you want to click on the, is this the status? Once that filter is click on the filter symbol and search box. Perfect. Okay, and then so once you do that, you want to go to details. So click this little green button right here. And then you want to hit clear. And then you want to scroll down. And this address passed all tests, you want to click that, press OK. And then you guys see what just happened. So now it's only filtering the leads who have passed the email verification. Okay, so then what you want to do is you want to select it all again by doing this. Command C if you're on Mac or just whatever it is on Windows, you want to copy the whole page and then you want to go to this sheet right here, the one that we created when we first hopped in. You want to press this, just Command V on Mac or just paste depending on what device you're on. Give it a second to propagate. And then you guys will see. So this list is the fully cleaned list. And what we did is, you know, we uploaded the main list that had them all and then we just filtered them out. Okay. So this is very important. A lot of people skip this step and then it's like, you know, it's like they didn't even verify them at all. So you guys will watch, look, if we take away the filter, 
th see so now it's back to normal so and then now what you do is you can delete this sheet um, so we'll click this is you can delete it and then yep and then you'll basically just be left with this sheet which is all verified and then what you want to do is you want to click uh, looks like we have to verify it so YouTube list save and then this is what you want to do because we're going to upload it to instantly later is you want to give anyone access so anyone access um, and then you want to click it again oops and then you want to click it again and you want to make sure that it's on editor um, and then copy link so then we can give this to instantly later okay so let's keep moving on. So this is how you basically clean and verify list, okay? Um, and then if you guys want a more expensive option, if you wanna do this quicker, you can use a software called Million Verifier. Uh, they do cost more, but they'll do it a lot more quickly. Uh, I just use, I still use Bulk Mail Checker, even though that my agency's at 6K per month right now. And it's just cause it's like, why not? You know, it, I don't need it that much quicker. And it just, you know, saves a little bit of money in the long run. Um, so that's how you do that. Um, and then so part three, so now you guys know how to set up everything on the technical side, you know how to scrape and verify leads. So now let's get into the part that you've all been waiting for how to write copy that turns these leads into booked appointments on our calendar. So ah, the part you've all been waiting for, let's write some killer cold emails. So here's what we're going to be covering subject lines, templates and follow ups, how to respond to positive responses and then how to leverage your signature. So I like writing extremely short and simple cold emails. A rule of thumb is that your cold email should fit on an iPhone screen as that's where a large percentage of your prospects will read it. Most people end up overthinking when it comes to writing good cold emails, but it's really much more simple than you'd think. So right here, I have a link to all these templates below. So if you wanna you know, open that separately, you can, but it's also in this document. So subject lines. So here's some of the best performing subject lines. Literally guys, don't laugh. First name, quick question, easy, 80 to 90% open rates. Guys, a lot of people over complicate subject lines when really any of these will get you 80 to 90% open rates. And if, if your deliverability is lower than that, it's something on the technical side, but we'll get to that later in this training. So test these subject lines until you find the one that has 80 to 90% open rates in your niche. I would always just test first name, quick question. That's always what I go with. Uh, I've never seen it fail, so try that one first. If you use one of these subject lines and get sub 80% open rates, it's normally a problem with your leads or something on the technical side. Don't worry, we'll go deep into deliverability hygiene later in the training. So guys, here's the first template. This is the one that I'm personally using right now. A lot of the campaign stats that you saw above, you know, on, on my instantly, this is what that is. So you guys might be thinking this is too simple. I promise you, that's what I thought when I first, you know, found this framework. This is literally a money printer right here, guys. It's straight, it's simple, and it's it's straight to the point. So here's like the template. It's just compliment, case study, call to action. So here's what it looks like in real life. So, you know, quick question, Tom, or Tom, quick question for the subject. Hey, Tom. So compliment right here. I noticed that you had 28 reported sales on Zillow in the past 12 months. Congrats. We recently helped Joseph, a top 1% nationwide realtor in Florida, get five qualified appointments and 85 leads within the first 25 days of working with us. So you guys can see I kind of wrote a case study right here. Now, if it's too complicated for your service to write a case study in one to two sentences, then you can use template two, but we'll get to that in a moment. So then the call to action. Are you able to take on more client leads? Let me know and I'll send over a few times to chat. So this is what's called a hard call to action, right? We're going in straight for the meeting. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more on this in a second. But I promise you guys, this cold email right here will print you meetings, okay? It's really this simple. And all you wanna do is curate this to your niche. Your niche. Um, and trust me, I, I promise you it's good that I'm not giving you an exact cold email for your niche. Just basically base this off your niche and you can come up with your really own good script that's gonna print you meetings and no one else has it. So this right here is like a golden framework, but here's another one that you can try. This is one that I'm personally using right now. It's closed me, uh, I think it closed me four out of my six clients. Just literally this script right here. And it's personalization, offer, call to action. 
So the personalization is just location based and it's, I was searching for orthodontist in Lubbock, Texas, and you came up first. So all you would do guys is Apollo gives you the city. So and instantly you would just create a variable for the city and state, and then you can easily have it automate into your cold email campaigns. Okay. So just literally that's the easiest way to do personalization with Apollo leads or any leads is just location based. So right here, I just basically did, I was searching for an orthodontist in Lubbock, Texas, and you came up first. And then here's, so this is the personalization. Here's the offer. We help orthodontists like yourself bring on five to 10 new patients every month. And if we don't bring you at least five in the first 30 days, you don't pay us anything. Mind if I send more info. So this is what's called a soft call to action. So you guys will notice we're not going in for the meeting right away. We're just asking them if we can send them more info. And that's where you're going to send them another email. You send them a video sales letter. You send them a loom video and then that will convert. So this will have a much higher response rate than something with a hard call to action going in straight for the meeting. So you have to ask yourself, do I need a lot of meetings right away? Or do I need a lot of responses and leads that I can nurture and follow up with and get even more meetings? So I use this soft call to action because it fills up my CRM very quickly. And then what I can do is, and there'll be more on this later, is I can nurture those leads with email marketing campaigns, right? So I like using these soft call to actions and they still have like a 1% booking rate. Whereas, you know, this one is just going for the straight shot and you want to test out what works better in your niche. But I have found mind if I send more info to book more appointments in the long run than something like this. So you can mix and match these call to actions, but these are the two very basic frameworks. Okay. This one works very well in pretty much all niches. I've never seen this template right here, not book appointments at at least, you know, uh, 0.80 to 1% conversion rate at scale. So, you know, every hundred emails you send, you book, you know, at least one meeting, which is pretty good at scale. Uh, so keep this in mind, guys. These are these are very good templates. Um, and then in terms of follow up, I like to send two follow ups after the first email. So the first one I send a day later and it's just or sorry, two days later. Hey, I know you're busy just making sure this email didn't get buried. So you guys can see that's literally what I'm using for my follow ups right now. And then follow up to this is kind of like and you and guys, the point of the follow ups is a lot of people will send like a second cold email as the follow up. But you have to understand the function of a follow up is to just to get them to go back and read the first cold email. It's not trying to, you know, hit them with the offer multiple times. We just want them to go back to the first cold email where the offer is and read it. You don't want to like send them a bunch of, you know, body based cold emails with your offer. Follow up should just be to get them to go back and read it. Like, hey, what did I miss in this email? So the first follow up and you send it one to two days later. Hey, I know you're busy just making sure this email didn't get buried. You guys will be surprised like at how much just this one follow up right here will boost your reply rate. Like it's actually insane. Uh, and then follow up too. this is called like a breakup text. So some people get really offended by this when you're sending cold emails. Uh, so, you know, just be ready for that. But this will convert into appointments right here. So this is basically the last email that you send. At this point, I'll assume taking on more ortho patients isn't a priority right now. Feel free to reach out when it changes. Or you can say at this point, I'll assume you're maxed out on ortho page on ortho patients. Feel free to reach out if that changes. So you can use either of those. The whole point of it is to be kind of like this breakup email, like, hey, this is the last follow up I'm sending you. Uh, and this will get you a lot of replies. Uh, but you only need you in my opinion, you only need two follow ups doing more might affect your deliverability a little bit. Uh, but I know people who send three follow ups, and it's totally fine. So you can do that if you want. I've just found you know what I just want to reach new prospects every day. So when you're sending three prospects, that's going to take up some of your daily emails or sorry, if you're sending three follow ups, that's going to take up some of your daily emails. So I like sticking to two, I found that to be kind of the sweet spot, but you can send three if you want. Okay. So what do you do when a lead responds positively? Well, I'm actually going to give you guys some templates for that. So here's one example of a positive response. You know, if they ask to say, you know, if they say send more info, you can send them this template right here. So, hey, name, we've developed an automated system to help orthodontists acquire new patients without having to rely on referrals. For you, this would mean being able to focus on your practice while we handle all the marketing and client acquisition. And if we don't get you new patients, you don't pay. Simple as that. Feel free to schedule a strategy call so I can walk you through this process and see if we'd be a good fit to work with each other. Calendar link. So something to keep in mind, guys, and you'll learn more about this in the deliverability part of the training. Never 
send links in the first email. I see people sending their calendar link in the first email. Guys, this is screwing over your deliverability. I actually don't even use calendar links at all. Um, but if you are going to send them, send them in a positive response email, uh, you know, so once they've already replied to you. And then something to keep in mind is you could just say, uh, you know, instead of saying, feel free to schedule a strategy call, say like, uh, mind if I send over a few times to chat or let's hop on a zoom call at Thursday at 2 PM Eastern. Just let me know if that works and I'll send the calendar invite. And then you would just go into the schedule yourself and do it. So either route you want to take, but you guys kind of get the idea. So you basically just format this to your niche, right? It's really just this three sentence, simple template for replying positively. I actually have another example right here. So Hey, name we focus. So this is if they say yes to send more info or if they like ask you like, you know, I'm interested in your program or they like, you know, they say, you know, tell me more info uh, separate to, you know, just if you send them the mind if I send more times to chat call to action and they say, give me a little bit more info, you know, you can send them these. So we focus on helping roofers triple their revenue with the power of Facebook advertising and funnels. And you know, you could take this out if you want. Facebook isn't really a good buzzword to use. Uh, you could just create your own kind of sexy name for your mechanism. Uh, like you could just put chat GPT. Just kidding. <laughs> but you guys get the point. Just don't don't use Facebook. That's a bad example. Um, your company seems to be in our wheelhouse. And the more I browse your website, the more it seems like the right fit. We want to fill up your pipeline with client leads. Would Monday at 2 p.m. suit you for a quick chat? So this this line right here, including this at the end of my positive response emails, this does really well because it's kind of casual, just like, you know, like kind of like you're shrugging your shoulders, like would Monday at 2 p.m. suit you? You know, it's kind of, you're just acting very casual uh, over email. So this line I noticed have done has done really well. So let's say that you send them this and they still don't reply. Well, the good news is you have them as a lead um, so, you know, you should input them in your CRM and I'll show you how to automate that later, but you want to follow back up with them. So this is the follow up that I use, uh, if they don't reply. So if they say yes, send me more info, or if they reply, reply positively, and we send them one or two of the positive reply responses, and we don't hear back from them, you want to send them this. So, Hey, Jesse, just following up on my last message. Did you want to have a quick 15 minute chat? Just let me know. Kind regards signature. Uh, and then, and then you can send one, if they don't reply to this, I like to send them one, another one, two days later. And all I do is this. So, so I just do this, um, like that. So again, just following up on my last message, did you want to have a quick 15 minute chat? So you can actually use this as kind of two follow-ups if they don't reply to a positive response. Um, and then if they ask for more information, Absolutely. May I ask you what information you would need to help determine if this could be a good fit for you? If you have 15 minutes on Thursday at 2 p.m., and then I always like to put time zone to just make the conversation as frictionless as possible, so then they don't have to ask like what the time zone is, and then that just you know increases the chances of them not responding. So I always include Eastern, Central, Pacific, Mountain. Uh, so if you have 15 minutes on Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, I could provide much more detail via Zoom. This wouldn't be a sales call so you can leave your card at home. Now you don't have to say this. If you do a two call close, you can. If you do a one car close, you can just remove it. I definitely wouldn't say that if you are gonna sell them, but it's just a kind of a fun little line that you can do if you only do two call closes and it does really well. Uh, if they ask about pricing, our service is modular and although I'd love to provide a price, I can't without having a clear understanding of your unique situation. As to not be vague, our pricing would range from X to Y. So, you know, you just put kind of a range. We do, however, offer a money back guarantee on, and then you'd put your offer. Do you have 15 minutes this week or next? So I could give you an accurate price based on your exact needs. And then actually what I would do is let's hop on a quick 15 min call next Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern where I'll explain how everything works and give you an accurate price based on your needs. Okay, guys, you see how I just changed it. So before is actually really bad because we were giving them an out, right? We were saying, do you have time free next week? Whereas if you just go in and propose them a time, all they have to do is say yes or no. And it's much more frictionless. So this is a line that I really like. 
Let's hop on a quick 15 minute call next Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, where I'll explain how everything works and give you an accurate price based on your needs. So that's a really good call to action right there, because all they have to do is say yes, that works or no, it doesn't. Or, you know, you can say at 3 p.m. at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. And you can give them multiple options to, you know, add a little bit more availability. But that's a killer line right there, guys. So save this one right here. Again, it will be left in the Google Doc. Definitely use this right here guys. This is killer even on LinkedIn This line works great when a lead responds and if they just ask you like what's the price? You can literally just send them this line if you want you want to experiment with what works in your niche But guys like I've literally only sent this line when someone asks for pricing and it converts so it does really well uh, So leverage your signature. So that's it for the template guys um, So you can kind of get an idea of you know, this is just a framework This is the framework that I used, you know sign six clients like I know it seems super simple in terms of cold emails, but this stuff works and you're not going to know it works until you try it and you have this feedback loop that confirms that it does work. Trust me, just try it. Even if you think this is too simple to work, go out and try it and definitely just, you know, uh, curate this to your niche, your niche, right? You don't want to just copy and paste these. You want to curate it to your niche. So if you were in real estate, you could copy and paste this one and, you know, use your own case study and it would print, right? Um, and then guys for the for the Zillow part um, See how I said 28 reported sales if you're scraping leads from Zillow You can just enter in the spreadsheet the number and then it'll automatically do it, right? So if you have a VA who scrapes the leads for you You can have them look up all the leads on Zillow and it will say a number of reported transactions Just have them enter it as a variable in the spreadsheet. So like for example, you could just make a, a thing called personalization and I probably spelled that wrong because I'm in a rush, but, and then you just put the number of transactions. So 23, 45, and then when you upload the list to instantly, you can use this as a variable and it'll automatically put that number. So depending on your niche, when you can leverage like certain awards, uh, you can always do that. So you can have your VA go and like, see if they won an award. So you could put congrats on the ortho uh, award. Right. That's obviously too simple, but you could do guys. You can use like personalization lines that automatically import to instantly and you can have your VA write that. But I don't want to go too off off topic, but that's it for the for the templates. But now, guys, I'm going to show you how to leverage a signature. OK, so let me make this a little easier to view. So as you'll learn in the deliverability section later, sending links on the first email is extremely harmful to domain health, which I already went over a little bit. Right. But using the signature below doesn't need links and can boost your authority and deliverability. Also, not just authority, it can boost trust. Okay. Um, let me edit that back out. <laughs> but um, it, it boosts your trust and your authority and your deliverability. So this is the signature that I use, right, guys? No links. You'll notice that. So you'll see it's just Jackson Williams. I don't put founder. And the reason I don't put founder is because the only people who put founder or CEO are agency owners who are working in their parents' basement. And business owners know this, right? You don't hear these people who are doing it big. They don't, they rarely call themselves, you know, founder or CEO. Sometimes they do, but I've found that saying something like account manager or, you know, something like that, it's like, that's what a real corporation would, you know, they would call you. And it, it just sounds a lot more professional and it can really help your status delta when you're booking these calls. So, and then I just put the email, uh, you can, you want to, for each signature, you know, you'd, you'd want to, actually you can disclude this because if you're sending from a lot of accounts, it will get very confusing if you know the email and the signature is different than the one it's sent from. Uh, but, you know, depending on how many accounts you have, you can do that if you want. Definitely put your phone number guys. I've had leads who have just they like I have such a good offer where a lead will just see my number and the signature They'll just call me and they will turn into like a qualifying sales call So put your number there It also tells Google's algorithm that you're legit because spammers don't put their phone number in their email uh, But it'll also get you some inbound calls, right? That's especially at scale if you're sending a lot of cold emails and then guys this part right here And this is like no not a lot of people are doing this in cold email signatures put an address like you'll notice I don't even put an exact street name just put Los Angeles you know your city your state and then a zip code um, and just if you're curious this isn't my real number and this isn't my real zip code but this is just an example so including an address helps Google's algorithm detect that we are a legitimate sender as spammers don't normally include one I've also found including an address to have a 1% increase in response rate as it creates more authority and trust 
right guys so what I noticed is as soon as I started putting this in my emails it boosted my reply rate by 1% every time um, and the reason I think it does that is because well one you know naturally it helps with deliverability so more of the emails actually get seen but it kind of creates this trust where it makes you seem like a much more real business and it creates authority. So definitely guys leverage a signature like this. It works wonders, helps with the algorithm, helps helps create authority and trust. So that's really it for writing cold emails, guys. Uh, and now let's move on to, or that's it for the copywriting section. So now let's move on to part four, sustaining deliverability. So no matter how safe you are, all domains will end up del losing deliverability over time. But I'm going to show you how to maintain 80% deliverability in the long run. So what we'll be covering the 50 50 ratio, how to ramp up after send, how to ramp up sending after warm up, spin tax, maintaining good hygiene, deliverability doctor and email rotation. So first off the 50 50 ratio. I see lots of people go wrong with this part and it ends up screwing them over after a few months of running automated cold email campaigns. You should never, and I repeat, never send more than 50 emails total, okay guys, total per email account. Now this is where a lot of people go wrong. This includes warm up and cold emails. Yes. Warm up stays on indefinitely after the 14 days. This reverses the damage caused by sending lots of cold emails every day. The ratio between warm up and cold emails should always be 50 50 to ensure the damage is being equally covered up. So I do 25 warm up emails and 25 cold emails, meaning I can send 250 cold emails per 10 email accounts. After completing the cold email ramp up phase below, go into your warm up settings and set the limit to 25. Some people break this rule and send more cold emails than warm up, which is totally fine in the short term, but their deliverability will drop significantly after a few months. I found it's best to just buy more domains and create more email accounts when I want to scale a campaign. So guys, seriously, this rule is going to help you so much maintaining 80% deliverability at scale for multiple months is just sending 25 cold emails per account while leaving warm up on. So I'll show you guys what that looks like if I go into warm up settings. So by default, you'll see um, warm up will be on 20. So and I'll, I'll go over this in a little but you'll see I ramped it up to 25. So and, and I'll come back to that in a second. So how to ramp up after how to ramp up sending after warm up. So you can start sending cold emails safely with an email account that has been warmed up for at least 14 days. But don't just start sending 25 per day straight out the gate. Here's a safe ramp up strategy that I, I always follow with new cold email accounts. So day one, you're going to want to start it out at one to five cold emails per day. So for example, as soon as it comes out of warm up, I just put it on five. And then right, so as soon as those 14 days are up, I, I leave this setting right here on five. Um, so what you do is you leave it on five and you click save. I don't need it on five because this is already warmed up. And you basically let it send five cold emails per day. And then after five days, you'd ramp it up to 10. And then after 10 days, you're no sorry. And then yeah, and then five days later, you ramp it up to 15, right or 10 to 15. And then uh, and then day 15, you ramp it up to 20 emails, right? So every every five days, you ramp it up five emails, okay, until you hit 25 cold emails. So right, we're ramping it up five days every day, we're easing into sending cold emails, even after warm up. Um, and then as soon as we get to we scale it up five every five days, you can do it a little quicker if you want, maybe you want to do it three days. But this really, really helps your deliverability, because the start of your sending, uh, you know, you're sending uh, rep rep, you, the start of like your sending deliverability score, it starts with the first cold emails that you send. So if you get off to a slow start, you're setting yourself up for deliverability success. And a lot of people skip this stuff over. And after three months, their emails are basically done for, right? So you really want to do this, it really makes a big difference. Uh, so once this hits 25, we want to scroll down to daily warm up, and this will be on um, by default, this will be on 20. So you just want to come in here, change it to 25, press save. All right, and then you're fully ramped up, you're at a 50 50 ratio. And then you just want to do this per every account, right? So 
And you guys will notice I've been sending thousands of emails every day and look at my look at my score 99% 100% 99% 100% and more on this score later. But you guys can see this is I practice what I preach. And I've sent 40,000 cold emails total uh, to 13,000 prospects with follow ups. And I'm still at basically perfect health scores and 80 to 90% open rates. Okay, so so at this point you're at the maximum you know basically at the maximum recommended sending limit of a single email account which is a total of 50 emails per day 25 cold and 25 warm up you can increase these limits gradually each day if you want it to be extra cautious but increasing them every five days like shown in the above example works the best uh, keep in mind that none of these numbers are set in stone and you can ramp up much faster if you want but after consulting with deliverability experts, they say that these numbers are the safest in terms of long term deliverability. So part three, syntax. Wow, guys, we're, we're at an hour and 10 minutes. This is going to be a banger. This is going to be super valuable. If you guys are actually still watching this and you've been watching the whole thing, you're going to make a lot of money. OK, I promise you. So let's keep going. Spin tax. So spin tax is used to create and guys, look at this error. Syntax. So sp spin tax. Oops. So spin tax is used to create multiple variables in your cold email copy. This is what a spin tax looks like and how it should be formatted. So basically, guys, you're going to paste this in your cold email. So so it is basically just text separated by the vertical bar symbol enclosed in curly brackets. The example above provides three variations of a text, but you can use you can use just two variables or more than three. It does not change the way spin tax works. So you basically just need at least two. And guys, what this would be is let's say for the first line of an email, we want to say, hey, hello. Uh, hey, hello, or hi, what it will do is every three emails, it will send one of these or every email it will say so one email it will send will say hey, the next one it will send will say hello, and the next one it sends will say hi. So you can use this to create different variables in your cold email. And you can do this with call to action. So right if say for like the call to action, uh, say watch this guys, and I'll show you this real time. Um, so say for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So right here, say for example, like this, what you would do is you would just paste this in on instantly. And for the first one we would do and make sure random stays. Don't edit that. We would do mind if I send more info and then we could do, um, let me know if you're taking on more clients and I'll send over a few times to chat. Um, and would you be open to chatting? Um, okay, guys, and what this will do is it will send in one email, it will send the first call to action, in the next one, it will send the other. And what this does is it makes every and actually, so spin tax can be used if you want to create a lot of these, but instantly actually just added an AB split testing feature. So you can also use that if it was like just the call to action. And that would actually be better because you can get data on what's working better. But the purpose of syntax isn't to AB split test. The purpose of syntax is that, um, and let me remove this because you guys are going to be using the document. The, the purpose of, you know, syntax is basically to make every email different. So, so it's also important that you include random as the first variable as shown in the example, uh, because that makes sure that your spin tax will automatically choose one of the following variables. So guys, remember that choose, choose this, but why is spin tax necessary? So spin tax will make sure that each email is as unique as possible, which will in turn increase your deliverability. Email providers have algorithms that can detect an email's digital footprint and will suspect spam if you keep sending the exact same copy every week. Syntax allows you to create more than two variables. 
helping you stay under the radar. So guys, include at least one to two, maybe three syntaxes in your cold email, and it's gonna it's gonna help you go a long way because it's it's gonna make sure that every email is unique. Because if Google knows that you're sending the same emails every day and they're exactly the same, they're gonna quickly realize what you're doing and you know they're gonna blacklist you and your deliverability is gonna drop overnight. But if you do this, it helps you stay under that digital footprint radar. Okay, so that's Spintax, uh, and I always call them Syntax accidentally. I don't know why, but it is Spintax, okay? So, drink some sparkling water. I've been talking for an hour. Um, maintaining good hygiene. So, here's a mind map of everything you can do to have the best hygiene standard when it comes to deliverability. So, this is like a resource I really like. It's actually made by Instantly, and I'll kind of just walk you guys through it very briefly. Some of these we already covered, some of them we didn't, but this is like the ultimate deliverability checklist. So, first one is continuously get new domains, two to three domains a month. So, basically, you know, always having new domains that have fresh sending, uh, like, you know, fresh sending. They haven't sent any cold emails and they're fresh. That's when you're, that's when emails have the best deliverability before, you know, people start reporting them as spam and blah, blah, blah. And you send a lot of cold emails. Okay. So, consistently buy new ones. Look up list of 750 spam words. Avoid spam trigger words. Right, guys? So, you can easily look this up. There's very specific words that, you know, kind of trigger these spam radars you want to make sure that you're avoiding those, okay? This we already covered, set up SPF, DKIM and DMARC. That's why I had you guys do it first. This one's very important. Minimize bounces, clean and verified list. Now you guys know, I'm telling you why to do all this. Inbox rotation, I'll go into more detail on that. I actually have a section for it. It might be below this. Uh, so I won't go into this yet. Uh, if you have a signature, keep it simple. No images or links. So right guys, already went over this. If you want to track open rates, set up your own custom tracking domain. So we already covered that, guys, right? Uh, warm custom tracking domain. So you want to warm up your emails with the custom tracking domain. So, you know, that's why I had you guys set it up first. So then, so then when you start warm up, the emails are being warmed up with the tracking domain. 80% replies for warm up. So if you want, you can go in your instantly settings and you can boost the reply rate on warm up emails. This is like the one thing I don't agree with. I think if you, it's already set by 30% by default. And I, I've heard if you go more than that, Google actually gets suspicious. And that's another thing too, guys, and I'll get into this later is actually, this is the next one, is turn off badly performing inboxes. Uh, so if you have an inbox that is, you know, it has a low deliverability compared to the rest, just turn it off and put it on warm up. And then another thing, guys, is is okay. Actually, this right here. So this just came to my mind. So we'll skip ahead. Turn off bad performing campaigns as soon as possible. So if you're sending out an email campaign and the and the reply rate is below five percent, that's really gonna damage your sending you your sending reputation because they know if you're sending out an email and people aren't replying to it, it's probably spam. So that's why you want to at least have above a five percent reply rate. And if you don't, you want to turn it off immediately and test new angles. Okay, so if you have a campaign doing poorly, just turn it off because it's going to do more harm than good. And that's why we have a warm up going on at the same time. So then, you know, because that campaign always has a 30% reply rate. And that's why we leave it on, right? Because a lot of people just turn it off, which is very foolish. But anyways, so plain text mode, no open or click tracking pixel. So you guys will notice that, you know, in my campaigns, the one that I was showing you guys earlier, it says the open rate is zero. And that's because look, open tracking is disabled. So how you do that is you go to options. Uh, look at how many cold emails I'm sending per day, guys. 10, uh, 1,075. Uh, and you turn on this. So delivery optimization, send emails as text only. And once you know that you have a subject line that works and it's, it's at 80 to 90% open rate, turn it off and it will actually boost your open rate five to 10% just by turning it off. So if you already know you have a good subject line and you know everything's set up properly, you don't need it turned on. So if you turn it off, it actually helps your deliverability. Uh, so definitely do that. Um, switch up your copy. So avoid media in the first email, no videos, no images, no gifts. You know, so if you are gonna send those, send those to prospects who already replied or send it in the second email. I would only do it to prospects who reply though. So switch up your copy regularly, keep content reputation high and avoid fingerprinting. So that's why we use syntax, but also guys, every two to three months, just change your whole template, right? So you can just use the templates that I gave you and you can just switch them around completely and then create, you know, syntaxes in that new copy. So every two to three months, just change your copy completely. 
Uh, be patient with warm up two to three weeks. So some people will want to start sending cold emails right away. And you know, they'll they are they're impatient. So they just send a bunch of emails after like seven days, just wait at least 14 days. Okay, it's all you need. It's gonna it's gonna help you make more money in the long term. So just be patient about it. Uh, we already covered this turn off bad performing campaigns, ideally be in a warm up pool that can read emulation. That's why we use instantly don't need to go too deep into that just know instantly has you spin tax covered that three to five users slash inboxes per domain. So that's why I said three, it's on the lower end. That's what I do. Uh, and then do frequently deliverability checks with Glock apps. So that's actually in the next section, deliverability doctor. So instantly will give you a domain health score for each email account. Make sure to keep a close eye on them. If it ever drops below 97%, Make sure to take that account out of any active campaigns and leave it on warm up for a week. Okay, guys, so right here you can see the deliverability health score. Again, if we go on to instantly, this is what I was showing you guys the, and it's right here. So 99%, 100%, 99%. Every time that you open instantly, if any of these health scores are below 97%, you want to turn off, you want to take that email account out of the campaign immediately and leave it on warm up for a week. So you guys will notice all of mine are good and that's because I practice all the things that I taught you in this video. But even if you practice all these things, sometimes a lot of people might report you as spam at once, which you know can happen because you know you're sending offers to people and you know you're interrupting their day. Uh, it's, you're still gonna get clients, but some people are, they're just gonna get pissed off. So you guys will notice all of mine are almost perfect. But if, if this, for example, is 97, what I would do, and that's what I talk about here, is I would turn it off and leave it on warm up for a week, okay? So you just wanna be periodically keeping a close eye on that, uh, making sure nothing goes below 97. If you wanna go even deeper, you can use a tool called Glock Apps. I have it linked in the Google Doc to test your deliverability. Set a reminder for the first of every month to get a health report from Glock Apps. So you guys can just sign up with them and connect your email accounts and you can basically every month do a health report. Uh, after the Glock Apps report is complete, you can see the percentage of emails that went into the inbox and what percentage failed the inbox. If your inbox rate is over 90%, then you don't have to worry about taking the email account out of any active campaigns. However, if less than 90% of them land in the inbox, then take the email account out of any active campaigns and leave it on warm up for a week. So when you take an email account out of a campaign for a week um, and you put it back into a campaign after leaving it on warm up, keep an eye on the health score and instantly. And if it's still below 97, then just repeat the process, take it out, leave it on warm up for a week and keep doing that until you put it back and see if the health score is 99. And if it is, you're good to go. You've repaired the majority of the damage. Okay, that is the deliverability doctor. And then as I, I was talking about earlier, email rotation is this cool little trick that a lot of people use to really, you know, make domains last years potentially. So something you can do to make your email accounts as sustainable as possible is using a rotation. This is basically where you swap a set of, of email accounts between warm up and sending every month. For example, say you buy a total of 10 email accounts, only five of those accounts will be sending cold emails and the other five will stay on warm up. Then each month you basically rotate the accounts between sending and warm up. This reverses any damage done from sending cold emails each month and allows your accounts to last 10 times longer. The only downside is that you need to buy twice as many domains to send the same amount of cold emails. So this is, if you guys are patient and you know, you really want to get the most for your money and you want these domains to last years, you do a rotation because, you know, say you buy uh, 10 cold email accounts, you just have five that are always that are sending the first month, then you take them out and you put them on warm up and that month of warm up reverses any damage that happened while the cold emails are being sent, repairs the reputation, and then you just swap them each month and you do a rotation. And if you want to be really safe, you can make the rotation four and you can just rotate between each one. So then some of them are staying on warm up for, you know, two to three months. Uh, so that's like a little trick you can do if you if you want to make domains last really long, 
That's why in the mind map, it said they just buy new domains like every couple months. Uh, but if you're really, really safe, you don't need to buy new domains every month. I've had the same 48 email accounts for the past couple months. And as you guys can see, everything looks really good. And I'm sending thousands of emails every day. And that's because I'm following everything I taught you, like the 50 50 ratio, the slow ramp up, like a lot of people aren't teaching this stuff, teaching you guys this stuff uh, in terms of deliverability. So, you know, leave a like again, I'm giving it all away. Okay, I appreciate a like. Um, okay, part five systems. So one, we're going to be covering Zapier, Inbox Manager, and three, Nurturing Interested Leads. So instantly recently added a Zapier integration. This will allow you to create automations that integrate between multiple softwares. For example, I have it set up so every time I mark a lead is interested and instantly, they automatically get sent into my CRM, which is Go High Level, which a lot of you probably use. So this makes keeping track of all interested leads an easy task. This automation is really the only one you need, but if you wanted, you could set up response notifications, zap leads between campaigns, alert you when a campaign is almost finished, send non-interested leads into a global block list, etc. So guys, what, in, in, in instantly when you're managing your replies, um, like see this person right here, uh, I could go like this person says, I'm still interested in hearing more or did I miss this opportunity? I, I would come in here and you know, you select them as interested that automatically sends them into my CRM. Okay, guys, so this this stuff is, is is golden. It makes your it makes your life so much easier. You don't have to manually, you know, send every lead in your CRM, you just click a button, and they're already in my CRM. And that makes tracking leads and following up with them extremely, extremely simple. Okay, so and then what I mean by these other zaps, like that's the zap that you just you no matter what you should have it no excuses because it just make it saves you so much time, make sure none of these leads, you know, slip through the cracks and you can follow up with them into eternity and more on that in a second. But um, another thing is a global block list. So you guys will see how I can also select this is what I could also do is select not interested. And if I do that, it sends them to a global block list. So what a global block list is, is you guys will notice I have one right here, global block list. That's basically a list of people who every time I upload leads into instantly, it will automatically filter them out. So you can put your clients on your global block list because I accidentally sent one of my clients a cold email. It's not, you know, if your client's not chill, it's not a good thing that, that, that can happen. Um, but you also like all the leads who are not interested, you don't want to keep emailing them in the future because it's going to affect your reply rate, you know, because they're, or it's, and they're probably going to block you if you send them the same email. So you want to create a global block list of all the leads who are like, you know, for sure and no. So you don't every time you upload lists in the future, it automatically filters them out. An easy way to do that is by using the Zapier and the not interested feature. So as soon as you click not interested, it zaps them into a spreadsheet. And then that spreadsheet is connected as your global block list. So there's a lot of things you can do with Zapier. But those are the two main automations that I personally leverage, and you definitely should as well. So inbox manager, as you scale your cold email campaigns, responding to leads becomes a time consuming task. When you have at least $400 per month to spare, I would recommend hiring a virtual assistant to manage your inbox full time. This way, no matter what you're working on, appointments will always be popping up on the calendar. The VA's duties will include responding to leads, booking appointments, scraping new leads, launching new campaigns and reporting all results to a spreadsheet at the end of the day. So you can automate the whole like, you know, the rest of the e cold email process by hiring a VA to manage your inbox, scrape leads and launch new campaigns. And you can do this as soon as you have $400 per month to spare. And if you're scared about messing with your margins, this is going to make you so much more money, because then you don't have to worry about going in there yourself every day and responding to leads. And no matter what cold emails will be sent, even if you're on vacation, and appointments will start popping up on the calendar. Okay. And now to hire and train a VA, that's a video for another day, right? I don't want to get into that right now, but if you want to get started now, here's the best YouTube video I could find on the topic. So shout out to Charlie Morgan, definitely check out his channel. You guys definitely already know who he is, uh, but he has this video right here. So I linked it inside of the inbox manager, uh, part of the document. So you can click on that hour long video on how to hire and train VAs. I would follow his framework because that's what I use and I know that it works. Okay, so nurturing interested leads. As you start sending cold emails, you are going to quickly fill up your CRM with leads who responded positively to one of your cold email campaigns, but didn't book an appointment. 
After following up with them a few times, I like to put them into a nurturing campaign uh, and go high level. These email campaigns basically nurture them with content such as case studies, stories, testimonials, guides, etc. This is a good way to get the most money from your cold email leads and I've found it to be extremely effective. Another bonus tip, if you collect thousands of these leads, you can use them as an audience to Facebook ads. You can either retarget or create a lookalike audience. So guys, all the leads that get sent in your CRM, not all of them are going to book appointments. That's why you want to follow up with them with the scripts that I gave you. But if they don't reply to that follow up, like they were still an interested lead at one point, they saw your offer and they asked for more information. They're just probably not ready to hop on a call yet. But you know, you don't want them to buy from someone else in the future when they are. So what I do is if I followed up with them twice after responding positively, they automatically using go high level get put on an email marketing campaign that sends them case studies, it tells them stories, it sends them testimonials, you know, client results results and that nurtures them over time send them two to three emails every week and at the bottom of all those emails is a call to action so then they're being nurtured and when they are ready to book a call they're going to use it so that those email campaigns can have very high conversion rates and they're going to help you close a lot more of these leads and get a lot more money right um, and then another one is the the facebook ads so you can if you wanted you could retarget these people so then you know you could set it up with zapier so all the interested leads get sent to a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet could be connected to a retarget targeting campaign on Facebook. So then as soon as they see your email and your company name, you know, maybe they maybe they don't respond to your positive reply, they swipe out, they go to Instagram, boom, they see one of your ads and they click on it. And because that's a warm retargeting audience, or you can once you get if you get 1000s of these leads, and you know that they're all at one point, were interested in hearing about your services, you can use it as a lookalike audience in Facebook, and Facebook will, you know, show the ad to a lot of people who are showing similar behaviors as those leads, and that can get you a really good ad set. Okay, so who that was an hour and 30 minutes, guys, I covered basically everything I know about cold email, I really hope this was valuable. In fact, I know it was valuable. Like if you I know a lot of this stuff might seem boring, but if you watch this whole video, guys, you are going to win. Okay, you're going to win. Go and implement it now. Uh, if this was valuable, please like, please subscribe. I'm posting these bangers every week, uh, basically documenting and sharing everything I learned to go from zero to 6k per month in six months as a complete beginner in one of the most competitive niches. My mission is to provide more value than any 997 course on the market. So guys, if you if you like this video, like subscribe and comment what you want to see comment what you want me to cover um but guys this stuff seriously works i'm a living testament of it so go and implement